Okay, this is going to be a very simple tutorial on what I've learned to use Fusion 360 with the LX Mill. Um, I'm not going to go over how to create objects or you know to use Fusion 360 because I, I've only been using it myself for two days, so I am nowhere near being an expert. And there are plenty of very, very good tutorials out there on how to actually design uh, our objects and build them. And it's, it's an amazing piece of software. and It's actually incredibly intuitive. Um, I've used, I've tried using others like, you know, sort of Sketch and etc. And I found them very non-intuitive and very confusing. But this is very, very good. Anyway, to cut, cut to the chase, you need to go into um, Model. And create your model. So as I say there are tutorials on how to do it. I'm also going to put this model up uh, in a public space so you can download it. I would suggest you make a model that shows you, um, you so you can easily see whether it's printed upside down back to front etc. Hence the curve, the hole and the square etc. So I know when I actually got it printing right um, that it was it was actually correctly oriented. Okay, so after you've created your model, uh, you then go into the CAM module, and this is where you actually uh, set the system up to be able to print it. Okay, uh, now one thing you need to think about when you produce the CAM model is where you extrude it. You can extrude this thing two ways. You can either extrude it up or you can extrude it down. Uh, I would suggest you extrude it down because the the plane on which the, the z-axis is zeroed. If you have the model going up, then you'd have to be able to zero on the bed, which means either the material you're going to cut is got to be off or you've got to find somewhere off the thing. And if you do it the other way around, you can just zero on top of the material, which you know, zeroing your z-axis on top of the material means it's much more accurate. OK, so that's the first thing you need to do. OK, the other thing you need to do uh, is create your toolpath. OK, so if we go into here, I've got two toolpaths. I've created one which drills out the two boxes. OK, the, well, the circle and the box. And I've got the other one which actually cuts the object out. Now. The second one you may not need if it's going to be if the object is already the right shape, but it will show you how to do it. And I would recommend you do it in this order. This is the order in which it will work. It goes through that, uh, that one, and then that one. Because if you do it this that one first, obviously it will cut the part out, and then when it goes to cut the pockets, uh, they're going to be moving about. So make sure that the last thing you do is cut the object apart. Okay, so. What do we do to do it? OK, so you've got to go into 2D, uh, 2D Adaptive Clearing, OK, and that allows you to uh, create the cutting paths, uh, either pockets, etc. I've already created them here. And once again, excellent tutorials on how to do it. The things that you need to do in when you set these up, if I edit it, OK, the only things you need to change uh, with regard to using the LX mill is the tool. Okay, so what I've done is I've created a tool uh, which is in my own local library and it's basically I, I bought some um, mills from small milling inserts from Banggood and the one I'm going to be using uh, is a 3.17 millimeter wide. Okay, so having selected my tool OK, uh, obviously turn off coolant, set your feeds and speeds. OK, these are going to be a matter of personal preference. Um, how fast you travel, between, you know, while you're cutting. I've tuned this thing uh, more or less. I think probably 400 is probably the best for cutting. So if I set that to 400, OK, that's the tool. So that here is your tool. And of course, it needs to know the dimensions to work out how to cut the path. OK, you then go into geometry and then you select what it is you're going to cut. 
Okay, so you select there and you select there and it will then say, okay, I'm going to cut those. Those are the objects cut. Okay, heights. This shows you the heights that it thinks are things that it should be aware of. So obviously we've got the bottom, um, we've got the top and we've got a retract. That is how far it pulls back the tool as it moves about. Okay, so if it's a flat piece of material, it doesn't really matter. You can do it one, two, three mil. Okay, these are all set up in here. Once again, trial and error. Mess about, that's what I did. It's pretty self-explanatory. And when we come to the simulation, you'll see just how easy it is to sort these things out. Okay, passes. Okay, how are you going to do the pass? Okay, I select um, multiple depths and make the, each one about two millimeters. Once again, this is something you can play around with. Okay, uh, linking I haven't touched yet. I'm not really sure what it does and I found it, I can cut perfectly well without changing that. Hopefully I will find out at some point what it does. Okay, um, as you can see here, I've got a little, um, little exclamation point, which is telling me I've got an invalid toolpath. That means I have to actually recreate the toolpath. Any, cha any changes you make, um, it's always a good plan then to re redo it. Okay, and it's done it. Just by saying do it, it had done it. Pretty simple. Okay, so if I take this one and edit it, you can see this is the, the de these are the details for the second one. And of course, they are separate. They can have separate tools. So you can have a different tool. You can have a smaller diameter tool for drilling small holes in the middle and a larger one for the outside. Same again, you know, you set up, you, you pick your tool, uh, you set your geometries, um, and heights, all of these things. Um, nothing really much to say about this. Okay. Now there is one thing that we need to to, to be aware of when we do this, um, and it will be obvious later on when I come to it. So let's just go and do a simulation, and you'll see what I mean about how how easy it is to check whether you've got it right. So if I say simulate. It's now going to work out how to cut that. And if we now press the play button, you'll now see it actually simulating the cut. Uh, this was set to do multiple depths. So rather than drill down to the bottom all the way in one go, it's set to do it in uh, two goes. That was where I set the um, the drilling depth, if you remember, right? the cutting depth. So it's doing the second pass. And that's the, the pockets drilled. And now we go and, and mill the outside. So this will now separate out the part. Uh, that was where it went around the first part of the outside and came back and did the... Um, the curved part. And that's it. It's done. Okay. So how do we how do we cut this? We just go up to here uh, into actions and we do post process. Okay. This is where it produces the G code. So what you need to do, this is the these are the bits that are specific now to the LX mill. Okay, everything I've showed you up to now um, is pretty generic and you'll find training courses and all sorts of things. The things you need to do for the LX mill is in here, you can have this, it will open the file for you to look at it in the editor. It's up to you whether or not you do that. Okay, you set here what the, um, the G code is going to be created for. And I have found that you need to set it to, to grbl.cps, which is the grbl code. It's possible that others will work, but I, I haven't had the chance to try them all. So just that one seems to work pretty well. Okay. And in properties. Okay. The one thing we need to do in properties is to turn off uses G28. Um, I have found 
that uses G28 drives the Z-axis uh, bananas. I'm not sure why, it's probably because the, the gerbil in, in, uh, interpreter that's running on the x bill doesn't understand G28. So disconnect, don't enable that. And that's it, basically. So tell it what, uh, what the name is going to be. I've got it here, test widget G-code. Uh, overwrite it, so I'm going to replace it. And that's it. It will now pull up here the G-code. And this is the G-code it has produced. So you can examine that to your heart's content. OK, so the next thing we need to do is to find some way of sending the G-code to, um, to the mill. Uh, I'm using the universal G-code sender um, because I'm running on a Mac. Um, use whatever you your um, G-code sender is. I think Candle and stuff like that. Um, this one works on the Mac. Uh, they're all the same. It's no, no different. OK, so the first thing we need to do is to go into machine control and select our zero. So we will now zero the um, LX mill. And the way I have it set up is the zero position is the centre of the work. Um, you may choose a different one, but remember to make sure that you set the zero position on your model to be wherever you want it, if you want it the left-hand corner or whatever. OK, so having um, reset the zero, so I now have the, the z-axis touching the top of the workpiece. OK, I then go into file mode and I load that file. Test with G code. Say open. OK, and now... We just click on send and that will send the code to the printer. Sorry, the mill. Now for some reason, it, uh, it does a strange air cutting. In other words, it spirals before it comes in. I think that's the setting I need to check, but once it touches the, um, the level, it then starts to cut. Unfortunately, the automatic focus is struggling with this um, very white background. As you can see, it's now cutting out the square pocket, which should be on the left-hand side, which it is. And now we do the second pass.
This uh, particle board stuff is extremely noisy. It's a sort of plasticky, papery thing. No idea. It's just I have a lot of it. And the curve, as you can see, is in the bottom right hand corner, the same as the model. So we have the thing correctly orientated. And it's done. So, if I retract and we remove the clamps, okay. it looks uh, a lot ragged, more ragged than it is because of the nature of the. Um, the material. It's actually very nicely cut. Uh, when you clean up all this loose stuff it comes out very very nice. Uh, very good piece of software fusion. It creates a very nice product. Yeah, I didn't cut all the way through because I'm experimenting at the moment so I don't want it to go and cut. As you can see I've had a few accidents already so I don't want it to cut through all the way through to the base. <laughs> 